from the Great Hall of the Polish Museum of America in Chicago, Illinois. I'd like to welcome you to our annual uh, Pisanki workshop, Polish and Ukrainian Easter eggs. My name is Christine Frankowicz Bird, and I'm here with my friends at the Polish Museum, and we're going to learn about how to make traditional Pisanki. So there are a couple of different techniques that um, are prevalent in the diaspora that have come over from the Ukraine and from Poland. And um, those techniques can vary and some are very traditional, some are a little bit more modern, but um, the idea is the same. Uh, pisanki is a wax resist uh, technique. It's also referred to as a batik style. Um, we will be applying wax to an egg and then dyeing the egg in a, um, an aniline dye and then progressively adding more layers of wax and more layers of color until we can finish and reveal our final design by removing that layer of wax. To make your own pisanki at home, uh, you will need a kistka, which is the stylus that we were using in our workshop today. You'll also need uh, beeswax, as well as a candle, a uh, flame uh, which you'll be working on, as well as the aniline dyes. So these tools are available in the Polish Museum of America gift shop, as well as polishmuseumofamerica.org. There are also many online retailers and you can check your local craft store for Pisanki supplies as well. So um, we're gonna be learning about two different techniques. The first technique is um, a, uses a tool called a kistka. This is a kistka. It is a, um, it's a very simple design tool. It is a tiny funnel, often made of copper, copper or some sort of metal, and it's attached to a, a, wooden, um, a wooden holder. And we're going to be warming it up and putting in the little funnel a bit of wax. And when that wax melts, we'll be able to use this like a stylus. So we'll be able to draw on the egg. The other way you can decorate eggs is with a simple, um, tool that is a pencil with a pin on the end. And what happens in that case is you'll warm up the pin and add it to a melted wax, uh, a melted wax holder, and then you can drop the melted wax onto the egg to produce a drop, droplet type of shape. So those are the two different methods. Um, both are um, popular in Poland and Ukraine. Today we're going to be using our kistka to draw. So let's um, get our candles lit. Um, those of you with the lighters nearby, go ahead and, and get those um, started up. And in order for your kistka to work properly, the copper part of it does need to be quite warm. So you'll be holding your kistka over but making sure that you're specifically focusing on the copper part of the funnel. Not the wood part, because you don't want to burn the wood, but getting it nice and warm, okay? Now we haven't put the wax in yet. I just want you to get a feel for what that's like. So just kind of pass it over slowly, just like that. Yeah, so not just the, yeah, there you go, okay. All right, now give that a little bit of a break. Okay. Now there's nothing that's going to happen yet, but I want you to feel what it feels like. Hold it. You can hold it like this, like you're holding a spoon, or you can hold it from the top, whatever, whatever's comfortable for you. But you want to do whatever it's going to take to keep your hands steady. And then just take the end of it, and you won't see anything happen yet because we haven't put any wax in, but we're just dragging it across the paper, very gently, very lightly. You don't want to press hard like you would with a a crayon, but rather just kind of let it float over the paper, okay? So the wax that we use for um, the, this type of process is beeswax. So you wouldn't use paraffin wax. Paraffin wax is what's in a candle. It's a little bit different. Beeswax is a natural product that can also have some dye put in it so it's easier to see. So you're going to be putting beeswax into the funnel. And there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, one is to simply scrape the little bit of wax with the end of the funnel like this and pick up a little bit. And your, your, your um, funnel's gonna be a little bit warm right now, so it's gonna pick up a little bit of that. Or you can also get wax in strips 
This is just a colored wax in a strip form, in which case you can just add it to the funnel and break off a little piece. So go ahead and put some wax in your funnel, in your kiska, and once you've got that in there, let's go back to our flame and get it warmed up. Once you think you've got it good and warm, go ahead and start practicing on the paper. You need some help, Nataka? You could, that looks great, that's perfect. You don't need a lot, just a little bit is fine. And if your kiska gets cooled off, the wax will stop flowing, so make sure you keep it nice and warm. It's not just the tip, it's the entire chamber. If you're having trouble getting the wax to come out, pass your kiska over the flame from front to back like this. And be patient, slow. Once you get the hang of it on paper, we can switch over to the egg. And they do get clogged sometimes, so you kind of have to, did that work? Yeah. If your kiska is warm, it will be a little easier to pick off the wax from your wax block. Just make sure you don't touch the metal part because it will be hot. Oops. How's it going? Awesome. Do you need to... Thank you, Arthur. And once you feel pretty good about drawing on paper, Let's look at our eggs. So these are hard boiled eggs. Um, we're gonna be working in aniline dyes, though these are not food safe dyes, but you can certainly use food safe dyes at home and um, in which case you can eat the eggs. Be, yeah, yeah, you all set? Yeah, your lines are looking pretty good. So I've given you two eggs. Um, one has some, some uh, guidelines on it. If you'd like, you can use those. We have some design examples here. Um, but whatever you draw with your first set of lines is going to stay white. So looking at an example like this, this is a finished egg. See all the white lines? Those were the lines that were done first. So when we first started the egg, we did all the lines that we wanted to stay white and we kept them um, in that color before we dyed in the first color. So whatever pattern you'd like to do in white, you can add to your egg. like this, back and forth. Very perfect, keep going. Okay, now try drawing. Yeah, now you got it. Nice job. But you have to keep getting it warm again. Once you draw a few little um, lines, then go back to your egg. Nice, very nice. If it stops coming, through the little funnel, go ahead and, and warm it up a little bit more. There's quite a bit of wax in there. It's gonna stay for a while, but it will cool off pretty quickly. So you wanna keep warming it up and, and going back to it. Oh, look, how's it going? Is it working? Yeah, if it starts to get clumpy or not come out so well, it's probably not warm enough. So just keep warming it again and again. I always like to do one or two lines on paper before I go to my egg so I can see if it's coming too fast or too slow, and then you can continue. As always, when you're working with an open flame, especially for um, our younger artists, make sure you have an adult helping you with that flame, and also um, have fire safety in mind. So keep a fire extinguisher nearby and uh, be ready. But um, if you're careful, like we're doing here, you should be okay.
This is a great way to relax and just meditate. In fact, in, um, in the earlier history of making pisanki, it was done as a prayer, as a meditation. It's an exercise that's done during the Lenten season to prepare for the upcoming Easter celebration. So many of the art symbols that you see on Pisanki have different uh, representations, meaning life and peace and love and good harvest and um, miracles, those types of things. And the colors are symbolic as well. So we carry those traditions into the current day and we are able to um, enjoy them all over again. So I am almost done with one of my eggs. You keep going and take your time. But what I'm gonna do is finish my white lines and then we'll look at what happens next. So as soon as my white lines are completed, we're going to submerge the egg in the dye and that will preserve everything we've drawn with our first lines to stay white. I'm going to show you guys how to do the dyeing. This is a yellow dye. When you work with Easter, uh, with Pisanki, and you're going to be layering different colors, you always want to start with the lightest color because the darker colors will build on top of that. So to dye the egg, we're going to add it to the dye and let it submerge. And with these types of dyes, they do um, take somewhat quickly. They are a little bit bolder than your average food coloring dyes. Allow it to sit for about, and agitate it a little bit, like that. Try not to splash, because these will stain your clothes and your hands and everything else. And if you'd like, there are plastic gloves that you can put on while you do the dyeing. There's no hurry, you guys. I'm just moving ahead so you know the next steps. Here, I'll come and grab this over here. We have to keep our, keep our distance. So here's an egg that I left in the dye for about two or three minutes. So it's got some nice color. All of my white lines are going to stay white. And now I'm gonna add a new set of lines. And those lines will remain yellow because I'm coloring over the yellow dye on the egg. So I've completed a new set of lines on my yellow egg. It's nothing fancy, just a little rose, a little flower, and some swirlies. 
and those swirls and extra lines will now stay yellow. I'm gonna go to my next color. How did that turn out? It's a little fainted, but it's good. So I have left my egg in this darker dye for a little while, and you can start to see a little bit of the yellow shining through the, un um, the covered wax areas. So now I'm going to let it dry for a little bit. And once you draw that line, you can't really take it away again. It's kind of for good because as soon as the wax makes contact with the shell, it sinks in. And even if you wipe it off or erase it or remove it, that wax is already penetrated. So it's okay if you put a line where you don't want it. That's part of the beauty of working with Pisanki is because they are handcrafted and they're very personal. And they're not perfect, but that's okay. So now with my design, I want to color in a little bit more. And whatever additional wax I put on is going to preserve the red color. So now I'm going to, with my dried egg, with the red dye, I'm going to add another layer of wax. You want to see that flowing wax almost like, like a liquid. If it's clumping out, just make it a little bit warmer. I am warming my kiska a lot. That's what I'm noticing is that you are all doing a great job. The more you warm it, if you go in there even more frequently, you're gonna get a much flow, a flowier wax. It's going to move faster and be more like a, like, a, um, like a marker. It should just flow right out. It shouldn't clump out. So I've added my final set of colored areas. Everything that I wanted to preserve in red is now filled in with wax. So where you see this darkest wax, the inside of the petals of this flower and these swirls, these are all going to stay red now. So now I'm ready to go into my final color. So I've got the black all on my egg now. See, you can see the colors shining through a little bit, but the real magic happens when all of the wax comes off. So I'm gonna let my egg dry. And then after it's had a chance to rest a little bit, we're going to remove the wax to reveal the finished egg.
So I'd like you to keep working on your eggs, but I'm going to take the wax off of my finished egg so you can see what that's going to look like, okay? Yeah, go ahead and put your, your egg in the dye. That looks great. So traditionally, the way wax is removed from the egg is with heat, just like you warmed up your wax to add it, you're going to warm up your wax to remove it. These eggs are full. These are hard boiled eggs. Um, some artists work with full eggs that are raw and then empty them later. Sometimes you can work with shells that are emptied ahead of time. But no matter how you prepare your shells and your eggs, when you're all finished, you want to take off the wax lines to reveal the design underneath. So you're going to hold your egg near the flame to the side of the flame until you start to see that the wax is liquefied. So it's going to slowly, slowly start to become liquid again. And then when it is, you give it a gentle wipe with a towel or a cloth. Pisanki is not something you can really rush with. You take your time. And the more patient you are, the more steady you can keep your hand, and the more exciting it is when the design reveals itself when you're done. So I have removed all of the wax after warming it and melting it. And now I can see all the colors of my egg are revealed. So I've got my original white lines, and then my yellow lines, and then the red. So you can take a very simple design like this one. I moved pretty quickly, so it's a little, um, little fun with my curly lines there, but you can change it up very easily just by switching up the colors and doing different variations of the same pattern. So here is that, that progression of the different dyes and the different stages of it. We started with the white lines, and then we dyed in green and added more lines going in different areas. After finishing the green, we dipped in blue and then did a, some more lines and filled in some areas as well to preserve the blue color and then dipped in black. And after removing the wax, we can see all the different layers. So that's your finished product. So here's another example of a progression. In this case, the last color ends up being red. So we started with the white lines and then progressed to the yellow dye on an egg that looked like this. We dyed it yellow. And then all of the lines that appear darker here were added in uh, the second step. Then that egg was dyed in green, in green, <laughs> in orange. And additional dye was applied, moving to red as the final step. So this egg and this egg are the same in the same stage. This is before the wax is removed and this is after the wax is removed. So we've had a great time working on our pisanki, our Easter eggs for this holiday season. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, hopefully you can enjoy some pisanki decorating with your family. Um, we wish you a wonderful Easter season, uh, and uh, we'll see you again soon at the Polish Museum.
Muzeum Polskiego w Ameryce chciałabym złożyć wszystkim Państwu radosne i serdeczne życzenie zmartwychwstania Pańskiego, aby odrodziła się w nas nadzieja i pewność, że jesteśmy w odpowiednim miejscu, abyście Państwo tłumnie mogli odwiedzać Muzeum Polskie w Ameryce. Od nas wszystkich, od pracowników, wolontariuszy, Rady Dyrektorów, serdeczne ukłony. Wesołego Alleluja. On behalf of the Polish Museum of America, I'd like to extend the warmest holiday Easter wishes to our friends and supporters. May the season bring you joy, peace, and most of all, may we remember all our loved ones who have passed in the past year.